Good morning, all of you. In the last class, we have seen how an OFDM signal is generated, transmitted, and how the original signal is recovered from an OFDM transmitter. In today's class, we will be studying about OFDM transmitter and receiver. OFDM transmitter and receiver and we will be understanding what is called as cyclic prefix. So this is a basic fundamental block diagram of an OFDM transmitter and a OFDM receiver. Previously, we have understood that OFDM is a multi-carrier modulation which uses DFT and IDFT for transmission and reception. The multi-carrier modulated signal is generated by employing IIFT at the receiver to recover the information symbols one can correspondingly employ FFT operation. We can expect a question like with a neat block diagram explain the transmission and transmitter and the receiver of a multi-carrier modulation technique such as OFDM. And we have advanced technologies coming up like NOMA, non-orthogonal multiple access. For 5G, 4G, 5G and probably 6G, we will be using OFDM modulation techniques. So let us see, with the help of this block diagram, let us see how OFDM symbols are generated. The input data stream is modulated by a quadrature amplitude modulation, QAM modulator, resulting in a complex symbol stream, X0, X1, up to Xn minus 1. We have a total bandwidth B, we have divided this total bandwidth into N equal parts, each with B by N. So each input symbol is represented by Xi, here X0, X0 to Xn minus 1. So in the block diagram, you can see that the input signal is QAM modulated and then given to a series, I mean a parallel to a serial to parallel converter. You get a serial stream here. You divide it into equal number of bits. Equal number of parallel inputs. That is starting from X0 to Xn minus 1. Now after we have converted the symbols X0 to Xn minus 1. The symbol is the symbol stream is passed through a serial to parallel converter whose output is a set of n parallel QAM symbols corresponding to the symbols transmitted over each subcarrier. If you have understood the concept which was discussed in the previous session, I believe that this would be much easier for you to understand. In the previous session, we have derived how we are able to extract Excel, the input data stream from the Fourier transform of the input which we have transmitted. In our derivation in the previous session, we have assumed that there is no noise. That is, the signal received Yn at the output is same as 
the transmitted signal s of t the next stage what we are supposed to do the n symbols output from the serial to parallel converter what a serial signal you have converted into a parallel one and then what we are going to do is that we are going to find the iift that is discrete frequency components the ofdm modulator output that is s of t in the last previous session we have seen that s of t is equal to s i of t is equal to sigma x i e raised to j 2 pi f t f i t am i right S i of t is equal to sigma x i e raised to j 2 pi f i t. so in order to generate s of t the frequency components are converted into time samples by performing inverse dft on the symbols which is efficiently implemented by using iift algorithm in future lessons i will be simulating to you how this ofdm is going to work we are going to generate sample streams we are going to use python programming language we are going to generate a signal we are going to convert it into its iift and then we are going to see how it is being received at the receiver's end so once you see that with your eyes you will find it very very much interesting i will teach you how to do that we are going to generate a we are going to create a program a software in which we are going to generate a sinusoidal wave or any other message signal and we are going to convert it itself into its bit streams sample it and quantize it like what we have done for our previous lab and then what we are going to do is that we are going to make its iift and then how we are going to extract this transmitted information the iift yields the ofdm symbol consisting of the sequence xn that is equal to x0 to xn minus 1 of length n where xn is equal to 1 by root n sigma i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 xi e raised to j 2 pi n by ni by n where n is the where n lies in between 0 to n minus 1 n is the total number of sub channels the transmitted signal is filtered by the channel impulse and corrupted by additive noise resulting in the received signal this signal is down converted to base band and filtered to remove high frequency components the a to d converter analog to digital converter samples resulting in a signal to obtain 
the receiver y of n is equal to x x bar n convolution h of n plus v of n where you have the value of n between minus mu to n minus 1 where h of n is the discrete time equivalent low pass impulse response of the channel the prefix of y of n consisting of the first mu samples is then removed this results in n time samples whose dft in the absence of noise is given by y of i is equal to h of i into x of i these time samples are serial to parallel converted and passed through an fft algorithm nowadays we use algorithms we use microcontrollers which can work on programs previously we had circuits with the advent of python and with the advent of iot what we do is that we use built in microcontrollers which is programmed we can use python we can use arduino we can use raspberry pi and so on we can simulate an ofdm signal using our raspberry pi this can be a part of your projects if you have a communication system you want to build a communication system you can you do that using ofdm if you have an iot processor what you can do is that you can program you can do the, the simulation what i am going to show you in python because that is not a part of our regular syllabus we don't have enough time i will be showing you a demo of how to generate ofdm this principle can be used in your projects to create communication systems if you want to test your project you can do that only thing is that you need a processor in the processor you can load these programs you can generate this ia dft or iaft of a signal whatever you have received you can just transmit it like what you are doing for this using a transmitter or an uh, the antenna or how we do the regular transmission the same process can be done by the receivers and also provided you have the regular the rf system to receive your signals this results in scaled versions of the original symbol h of i x of i where h of i is equal to h of f i is a flat fading channel associated with the i to sub carrier in multi carrier modulation what we have done is that we have divided the whole bandwidth into n number of sub streams right so what happens is that the input frequency whatever you are giving would be much less than the coherence bandwidth right so that all channels are flat fading the fft output is parallel to serial converter and passed through a qam modulator to recover the original data so with this we have explained how an ofdm is signal is generated transmitted received or recovered at the receiver's end and this was a question in your university exam in the previous uh, previous semester explain the transmitter and receiver of an ofdm multi carrier modulation system not just for the sake of exams these are all very important fundamentals that you have to know whenever we do any kind of communication engineering projects and this has lot of practical applications this has lot of research opportunities for students who wanted to go for higher studies and research you have a huge amount of research opportunities in ofdm modulation because 
we are working hard to build a system for sixth generation which ultimately uses all these kinds of technologies without understanding these technologies it is very difficult for us to implement 6g and probably even 7g which is coming up in future huge amount of research opportunities are available and i before i take the first session i will have explained to you why i have chosen to teach you wireless communication because of its immense importance in the present world now let us see some of the advantages of ofdm good performance under delay spread frequency selective fading conditions we have a higher band bandwidth efficiency we have efficient digital dsp based generation and detection mechanisms it might be a question for your university exams about the advantages and disadvantages of um ofdm next we will see about some disadvantages now let us see some disadvantages of ofdm first is the poor performance under doppler spread or time selective fading conditions we have high sensitivity towards non linear distortions sensitive to timing and frequency offsets as well as phase noise these are some of the disadvantages and some of the advantages what maybe for the academic purpose for writing your answers you can you can refer so many books you can get more number of advantages and disadvantages as we go on you can uh, for answering such questions but this i've just listed out a very few fundamental or basic things which might help you to get more answers now we will be studying what is cyclic prefix the channel output for a multi carrier modulation using dft and idft is not a circular convolution but a linear convolution the special prefix that is added to the input to convert a linear convolution to a circular convolution is called as cyclic prefix now let us consider an uh, channel input sequence xn that is equal to x0 to xn minus 1 of length n and a discrete time channel with the finite impulse response hn to be h0 to h mu of length mu plus 1 that is equal to tm by ts where tm is the channel delay spread and ts the sampling time associated with the discrete time sequence the cyclic prefix for xn is defined as xn minus mu to xn minus 1 the received symbol y at a given time instance n can be expressed as y of n is equal to h0 xn plus h1 xn minus 1 plus hl minus 1 to xl minus n minus l plus 1 that this is the inter symbol interference component that is y of n is equal to h0 xn is the data that is to be received at the receiver's end the samples corresponding to two blocks of ofdm are transmitted sequentially and can be given as x cap of 0 comma x cap of 1 up to x cap of n minus 1 which is the previous block this part represents the previous block this is the current block so this is the previous block and this is the iff iff is the of the 
previously modulated symbol block. Consider the received symbol y naught corresponding to the transmission of x naught. So let us, this will be the signal that has to be received. Y naught, y of 0 is equal to h of 0 into x of 0. And this is the ISI component that is being received from the previous OMDM symbol. The received symbol y naught experiences what is called as ISI. This is a previous block, this is a cyclic prefix, and this is a current block. So what happens is that the interference from the previous block is being protected by or is being eliminated by the use of cyclic prefix. So in a symbol diagram you can just put it as A B and symbol plus the samples from the previous block. To each transmitted OFDM sample stream, we add the last L C symbols to make the transmitted C from stream free from intersymbol interference. This is known as cyclic prefix. In the next session, the next session we will be studying what is peak to average power ratio, which is another one important drawback that comes with OMD. So thank you, thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much for us. We'll see. We'll meet in the next session.